Hey guys, what is up? I am Zone. I got a new video for you guys. This time I'm reviewing a replay of my own, but uh, this is a really important replay because something really interesting happens and I really want to show you guys how you can use this in game. So let's hop right into the game and see what happens. So important things to note in this game as you're looking at the enemy tank compositions, right away you see that uh, there's an e two E5s on each team, a 250B, TVs and Heavy, and a Bat Chat. And pretty much a mirrored uh, for our team, a 50B. We have some more medium tanks, some big tank stories. It's a pretty high tier game. I don't know why this is a half speed. So moving forward, uh, pretty much right away, I'm going to go to the hill in this tank. Pushing the water down this way is a tactic that can work. Um, it can work in a platoon, but I really would not advise it against really big tank destroyers such as a Yag Tiger and a 268 and a JPZ E100. Those tanks will shoot you as you cross this because they are they have not spawned yet. It's really good to do that kind of push if you're doing it like delayed like mid game. So I'm gonna skip ahead because I'm driving up to the hill and nothing much happens. So as I'm driving up to the hill, I notice that there's a bat chat out wide, which is good because I know he won't be on the hill right away. So now as I'm going up to the hill here, well one of the really uh, unfortunate parts of this map is that the you'll notice like a couple seconds the zero line the east side of the map has a really big advantage in that they can poke over the uh, A9 around this building corner and not get shot by that by the tank destroyers near their base whereas on this side of the map we can't do that so as you see here I'm side scraping a 50B not because I have a lot of armor but because I'm trying to limit my exposure to the, the tanks that I'm assuming are around this corner I see the batch that's still out there and one of the E5s is lit. I know they're E5s in a platoon, so the other one's probably with him as well. This is really unfortunate because they're here right away, and all of our team is still straggling behind. They took a while to get out of spawn. This E5 is getting really aggressive on my teammate in the TVP. And so I'm going to try to put a clip in him. I see that there's oh, lots of other tanks. That's not a great poke, so I try to back up, see if I can isolate the angle to only be exposed to the E5. I missed the shot on his cupola. Uh, I try to go for the drive wheel. I missed that too. Then I go for the lower plate and I missed that as well. Oh, this game has started off awfully. And then I just get double tapped by the E5s. Right here, I want to point out, guys, this was a mistake. This game started out terribly for me. I have 940 points. Let's see how I can recover from that. So, as I'm looking around at my team, I see that this fight is unwinnable. And I'm telling my teammates, I'm going to put two mates to come with me that we cannot fight this hill anymore. I'm trying to tell my teammates as well that we do pull off hill. This is an unwinnable fight. I really want to point this out to you guys. Just look at the enemy teams out there. They already have the positional advantage. They have the armor advantage and that they're E5s and that we don't really have ar heavy armor tanks up here. And they have more tanks coming out. We cannot win this fight. It's best to just to pull back and cut your losses. Even though I took a ton of damage and basically got none for it. So... I'm going to go right back, I'm going to pull back and try to recover from this uh, really, really bad opening play of my own. My platoon mate just died, so I'm pulling back. Once again, guys, uh, retreating is not uh, the worst thing you can do in this game. Cutting your losses and running away and pulling back to somewhere else on the map is not that bad to get a more defensible position. So I'm going to try to look around to see where I want to sit and try so I can uh, shoot them as they come off the hill. I decide that I'm going to go toward this ridge line, wherever the conquer is, and try to shoot them as they fall off the hill. This is because uh, I really don't want to be fighting these guys. I'm a 50B. I have no turret armor to speak of. So fighting that linear engagement along this ridge line is the worst possible thing I could do. So I'm going to have to put some shots into these tanks. I get a... Oh, RNG blessed me and allowed me to hit this really small shot on the M103 turret. I'm going to attempt to shoot it again. Once again, RNG lets me hit that. Probably uh, letting me get some damage after getting you know, screwed by the enemy team right at the beginning. So now I see the enemy team is getting really aggressive. They're pushing right away off this hill, which is good for us. Uh, I don't really have much shots right here. I see the E5 is poking over the hill. I've loaded gold here, guys, because I've done basically no damage this game. I really need to try to recover and help my team out here. Loading gold in this situation is really not that bad of an, of an idea. They have yet another tank going into the hill. So they have complete control over the hill now. And that's why I want to show you that this replay is what can I do to try to turn this game around because it's going very poorly for my team. We've lost a lot of hit points and tanks trying to contest the hill and we end up losing it anyway. So I only have one shell now. I shoot it off at a really, really low shot, but I didn't feel like wasting it anyway. So I'm reloading now. 
and not a lot is happening. They're just kind of poke fighting the hill. Uh, the E50 realistically should fall back and let uh, our team sh shoot them as they come off the hill, but he's not right now, unfortunately. This 250B is getting a little bit aggressive on him, but thankfully uh, he's exposing a lot. So I think if I was loaded, I'd be shooting this right now. And there's their team. So I see this E5 is pushing right away. I put one shell into him and put a second shell into him. I need to kill him, kill, eliminate him as soon as possible. So what's another shell into him, eliminates him. I'm not 2,500 damage done so far this game, and which is still not very much, guys. I need to do more damage to help uh, pull my team back into this game. And so I see that I'm looking for a shell on something, I'm looking for a shell on something, and I want to get rid of this one shell so I can clip, even if it's a low chance shot, and I have an opportunity to shoot the TV7 turret. So I take that, drop the clip again, and now Wayne to reload. I really want to show you guys this replay because it shows the importance of falling back and cutting your losses. As you can see, our team is still not really in the thick of it. They're, they have the map control advantage right now. They are winning the map control war and the hit point war. We're down a tank. But thankfully, once again, I'm just trying to hold off this line, holding them from pushing down the hill and taking even more map control for free. I have done almost all of my damage after taking 1,200 initially, which is the probably the, the craziest part about this so far. I end up waiting around here for a while, so I'm going to skip ahead real quick because there's not much to see. And so now we're back into it. The Yagtire gets spotted. He's pushing up. This is a really bad play in his part. They have control of the hill. I wait to see if he's going to overexpose and push up more, but I don't. That was probably a mistake of mine. This a uh, really bad mistake. As you just heard me say, this was a pretty big mistake. I was a little bit too aggressive and I tunnel visioned on the Yag Tiger. I didn't see the T-54 poking over or the other tank to his left. Thankfully, I, one of the tanks bounced and I was able to walk away with still some of my hit points. I only have 500 hit points now and now they have a Yag Tiger who could one shot me if he gets a decent, decently high damage roll. So I'm trying to see if he's gonna poke. He's a one shot. I wanna hold him to the shell and see if he's gonna poke this corner or not. I decide that he's gotten, he's decided he's not going to poke it, so I drop my clip, and now I'm just waiting. Once again, I'm trying to see if their team is going to be too aggressive and try to push their advantage too much. And so I'm going to hold my clip here and try to see if I can kill this TV-4. That TV-4 can be a big problem in this corner. This is a very powerful corner to be in in mid to late game situations. These guys can't shoot him, and so playing this corner can lay all these guys for all the tanks on hill. So I'm very, very worried about this T-54 lighting me as he pushes up this sti gets aggressive once again i realize that my position is being compromised so i need to pull back even further because this tv4 is getting aggressive and can light uh me for his team which he just does thankfully our t30 puts a great shell into him and i'm continuing just to fall back i see that they have two one-shot tanks i snap one off and kill the tv4 i need to kill the e5 and the yag tiger and the skoda because they are all one shots at this point in the game once again, I've done an amazing job of bleeding them as they come off the hill, even though I made this huge mistake in the beginning. Their Skoda is way too aggressive, and the T-30 punishes them for that rightfully. And now they have a one-shot T-125 and a one-shot Tiger. I'm pretty much just going to need to clean these guys up, and we may have re-won the uh, position war in, the, in this game. We won the map control back, and I see that their 250B is a one-shot. So now I'm trying to decide where is this Tiger and where is this 268. I'm very worried that the uh, 268 had gone on to the hill, which is a very, very real possibility. He could be just sniping on the hill, having his team light for him. But I'm just trying to see if I can get a shell into this 215B and not get lit when doing it. So I'm going to use my gun depression, try to poke over and get one shell into him, then I back off immediately. That Tiger misses a shell on me. Uh, that was really, really, really close. I probably should not have been so aggressive trying to take that shot, but now... He's dead, RNG had blessed me, and now we just need to clean up, find where the 268 is. That's the biggest thing I'm worried about, because once again, we really need to know if this 268 is on hill or not, because he could do a lot of damage to us. I'm a one-shot for him, this TVP is a one-shot for him, and right now you can see me, I'm trying to tell this 268 that he needs to go onto the hill and start providing this cross-pressure to the JPZ. Uh, but thankfully, our team lights the, G the uh, 268 in their base, in the building towards their base, so... He's been uh, camping base the whole time, and now I can move up and try to put pressure on this JPZ E100. I'm trying to see if I can sneak a shell into this guy. Uh, that probably won't happen, so I'm just going to hold my shells. 
I keep waiting to see if he's going to get lit again. I probably could have been more aggressive on this, but I really didn't want to get shot from the JPZ-100. No, I keep uh, keep looking around. I keep watching to see if this 268 is going to get more aggressive onto the hill because he's got to put some side pressure on this JPZ. Make the JPZ start uh, looking in two directions. Thankfully, this 268 gets lit, and I'm going to put some shells into him. I put one in, and he pulls away, unfortunately. So now I'm at uh, 4,500 damage, uh, almost 6,000 combined, and this has turned out to be a pretty good game for me. I managed to turn this game, which looked like an easy loss, into uh, a decent game. And I keep, I'm trying to tell this 2 8 that he has to take this shelf in this JPZ. He's got he's full hit points, so he needs to know that the JPZs it can only can shoot him and not kill him, versus everyone else is a one shot. Now I see that my uh, teammate, my platoon mate, the TVP has lit the JPZ. He's gotten too aggressive. And this JBZ is pushed up too far, so I'm just going to keep putting shells into him. And put the last shell into his turret, um, not turret, his mantlet cheek. And that was probably a little bit too aggressive, but that's okay. This game was basically wrapped up. I probably shouldn't have done that, but uh, uh, hindsight is 2020. I see that the uh, Tuesday's 8, I think, is still looking at me, so I'm really worried that I can get one shot by him. So I'm trying to pull out of the... Uh, render range so he can't even see me anymore. I realized that he's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the JBZ So I try to close some distance on him and maybe get a shell or two into him before this game is up. I See that this uh, Tuesday State's poking his butt out the t my platoon is clipping him and he dies So that's gonna wrap up this game guys. Let's take a look at the post game stats So looking at the post game stats, I ended up getting 115,000 credits 9,000 experience because this was my times five for the day but I think the important part is looking at the next slide. Look at the damage spread on this team. As you saw, a lot of tanks that went to the hill right away then didn't leave, ended up dying and not doing a lot of damage, not contributing a lot to the win. This is a really important example of why falling back is uh, an incredibly important thing to do and also one of the hardest things to do. It's really, really hard to recognize when to fall back, but falling back is something that uh, I think more people need to look at doing more often when the flank is completely lost or when you're fighting over a position that is completely lost as well. Looking at the detailed report, I ended up getting uh, about 7,000 damage combined using uh, assisted and combined and damage. Uh, I ended up doing, only, I, you know, I got knocked down to 900 hit points at the very, very beginning of this game. That was really devastating, and I saw that it was basically an unwinnable fight on the hill, so I pulled back and was able to do a 1,700 base XP and 9,000 uh, XP because of the times five. Once again, guys, I really want to show you guys this replay because it shows the importance of falling back and why doing it in the correct way is incredibly important. It can help you win more games. That's going to wrap up this video, guys. Thank you guys for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.